After bariatric surgery, patients must follow a structured diet progression to safely adapt to their new gastrointestinal anatomy and maximize weight loss. In this video, I'm going to walk you through diet progression from the day of surgery all the way through about three months after surgery. You'll see how patients transition from clear liquids to full liquids to semi-solids and soft solids, and you'll hear the various nutrition recommendations that coincide with each stage. If you watched my video on micronutrients and bariatric surgery, then you heard me talk about how pre- and post-operative protocols differ from clinic to clinic. That was true for laboratory monitoring and prophylactic micronutrient supplementation, and it's also true for diet progression after surgery. Put simply, there isn't a single evidence-based protocol that all clinics follow. There are often slight differences in the timing of the reintroduction of, say, pureed foods or the transition to regular solids. Those differences are reflected in the 2019 update to the Clinical Practice Guidelines, which were published by the American Association of Clinical Endocrinologists and the American College of Endocrinology, the Obesity Society, the American Society for Metabolic and Bariatric Surgery, the Obesity Medicine Association, and the American Society of Anesthesiologists. In their paper, they show recommendations from up-to-date the American Society for Metabolic and Bariatric Surgery's 2008 Allied Health Nutritional Guidelines, and the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics Pocket Guide to Bariatric Surgery. All of this is to say I've attempted to read as many resources as possible to come to a general consensus, but the protocol described here may not exactly reflect the one you see in practice. For a successful surgery without complications, Diet progression begins on the day of surgery with the provision of clear liquids. This is consistent with the recommendations from the ERAS Society, which states, a clear liquid meal regimen can usually be initiated several hours after surgery. The liquid should be low in sugar or sugar-free, caffeine-free, not carbonated, and they should be sipped, not gulped in large volumes. Examples include water, crystal light beverages, Gatorade Zero, decaffeinated coffee or tea, and broth. Other items like sugar-free jello and sugar-free popsicles qualify too. Typically, patients are instructed to start by sipping one ounce of fluid per hour using a medicine cup, and then slowly increase the volume consumed to a maximum of around eight ounces per hour. The purpose of the first stage of diet progression is just to establish tolerance, and it employs low sugar and sugar-free beverages to avoid osmotic diarrhea. Transition to the full liquid stage generally occurs at the end of the day of surgery if the procedure was performed in the morning hours or on post-operative day one. The full liquid diet stage lasts for 10 to 14 days. Since most patients will only spend one to two nights in the hospital after their procedure, this means it's started while they're admitted and then they're given the responsibility to follow it closely at home. The full liquid diet stage includes all of the beverages allowed on the clear liquid diet stage, and it applies the same principles of encouraging items that are low in sugar or sugar-free, caffeine-free, and not carbonated. New beverages that should be introduced include fat-free milk and ready-to-drink protein shakes or a protein powder mixed in water or fat-free milk. The goal fluid intake is approximately 48 to 64 ounces per day. Patients can even introduce items like plain or sugar-free flavored Greek yogurt, sugar-free pudding, strained cream soups, unsweetened applesauce, and smooth hot cereals like cream of wheat and cream of rice. These additions allow for more variety, which helps with compliance and patient morale. They also help to shrink the energy deficit to avoid rapid weight loss and increase the protein intake to help minimize the amount of muscle mass lost. The protein shake should be made a priority at this stage to minimize the loss of lean body mass with the gold protein intake set around 60 to 80 grams per day. Using commonly recommended shakes like Ensure Max, Premier Protein, or Quest, which all contain 30 grams of protein and 11 ounces, 
This would require two bottles per day, spread across four feeding sessions of five to six ounces each. Another consideration at this stage is the lactose and dairy products. Some patients develop lactose intolerance after bariatric surgery and need to transition to lactose-free products, even if it's just for a short amount of time. It's also in this stage that patients should begin to take their vitamin and mineral supplements, which typically consists of a chewable or liquid multivitamin with iron, calcium citrate, vitamin D3, and vitamin B12. Here's an example of what a day may look like. You can see how there are multiple feeding sessions of no more than 8 ounces at a time, the protein shakes are distributed evenly throughout the day, and the calcium citrate is given in divided doses to maximize absorption. With the addition of the Greek yogurt and the cream of wheat cooked in non-fat milk, the protein intake for this patient exceeds 75 grams. If you're enjoying this video so far, make sure you hit the like button, share it with a friend, and shop for more free and exclusive content by clicking the link down in the video description. After 10-14 to 14 days on the full liquid diet, patients are transitioned to semi-solid foods, where they remain for anywhere from 1-3 to three weeks. Here, they can add in pureed foods and foods with small soft pieces, like oatmeal, canned peaches, diced pears, and banana. But the emphasis remains on protein foods such as cottage cheese, scrambled eggs, tofu, and some flaky fish like salmon or tuna. Protein foods that can be pureed include chicken, turkey, or beef. This is achieved by cooking the protein first, then cutting it into small pieces and putting it into a blender with liquids like fat-free broth or gravy. Protein foods can be complemented with puree non-starchy vegetables like carrots, cauliflower, broccoli, and spinach, and pureed starches like mashed potatoes and creamed corn. For convenience and peace of mind, some patients will find it helpful to purchase foods that are already pureed, which may include buying baby food. Those who prepare their own semi-solids must be mindful of fruits and vegetables with thick, fibrous, or stringy skins or seeds, the fat in the meats they prepare and from cooking oils and butter, and added sugars in foods like canned fruit or oatmeal because they add calories and can lead to gastrointestinal distress. All patients in this stage must eat slowly, take small bites, chew thoroughly, and recognize feelings of fullness and stop when their body is telling them to. Patients typically eat 3-6 to six meals per day, and portion sizes are 4-6 to six tablespoons total. Patients should also eat the protein portion first before moving on to the fruits, vegetables, or starch, and continue to aim for at least 60 to 80 grams of protein and 48 to 64 ounces of fluid per day. Many patients benefit from separating solids and liquids by approximately 30 minutes to avoid filling up on liquids during mealtimes or causing gastrointestinal distress. Patients can continue with their protein shakes if they enjoy them, but can begin to reduce their intake if they're able to meet their protein needs from other sources. Finally, before a patient transitions back to regular solids, they should first introduce soft solids and stay on those for at least two weeks. In this stage, protein foods like lean ground turkey or chicken, whole beans or lentils, and low-fat string cheese can be introduced. So can boiled, steamed, or microwaved vegetables, as long as they're soft enough that they're easily penetrated or mashed with a fork. Some patients even do well with unsweetened dry cereal and crackers. Portion sizes in this stage generally increase to 8 to 12 tablespoons total. All other considerations, like prioritizing protein, eating slowly, chewing thoroughly, and being mindful of feelings of fullness, continue unchanged. By the time a patient reaches six weeks after their surgery, if all has gone well and they're tolerating a wide range of foods, they should be able to begin eating regular solids. At the very least, this should occur no later than 12 weeks, or approximately three months. With this final transition, 
patients begin to strive for a general healthful diet pattern that should continue to facilitate weight loss toward the individualized goal weight and include foods from all food groups with a focus on balance, moderation, and variety so it will be sustainable when the goal turns to weight maintenance and the avoidance of weight regain. Intolerance to certain foods can persist with dairy products, dry overcooked chicken and beef, raw or fibrous vegetables, fruits with skin, and soft bread, rice, and pasta as foods that are commonly cited. A technique to identify problem foods is to introduce only one at a time. Otherwise, it may be difficult to discern which food led to pain or discomfort. In summary, Diet progression after bariatric surgery occurs with a systematic advancement in the food textures permitted, starting with clear liquids on the day of surgery and finishing with regular solids no later than three months after surgery. At each stage, patients should choose foods and liquids that are low in fat and sugar, caffeine-free, and not carbonated, and they should eat slowly, take small bites, chew thoroughly, and pay close attention to feelings of fullness. Protein is made a priority throughout the process to minimize the loss of lean body mass, with protein shakes and Greek yogurt being key items in the first two weeks, and eggs and ground turkey and chicken being included after that. Intolerance to certain foods can persist, with dairy products, dry overcooked chicken and beef, raw or fibrous vegetables, fruits with skin, and soft bread, rice, and pasta as foods that are commonly cited. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel.